Good morning or good afternoon, depending where you're located. And thanks for joining our webinar today. My name is Elise Arthurs, and I'm the Director of Partner Marketing here at RightScale. And I'm excited to kick off today's webinar, Hybrid Cloud Solutions, with our partner, DataPipe. We always start our webinars with a couple of polls, just so that we can understand the background of who's attending the webinar today. So we'll start with that. We'll launch the first poll, and I just ask that you take a moment to read the question here and then give us your answer. This is about whether or not you're familiar with the cloud today in terms of using infrastructure as a service, such as an Amazon model or a Rackspace model. So if you could provide your answer to this, that would be great. And then that way we can just see how much experience we've got here on the attendees. Okay, we're just giving it one more moment here, and then we'll put all the answers up. And it looks like, okay, we've got a decent amount of people who are actually working with a couple of projects, but also a fair amount who haven't started yet to do anything with infrastructure as a service type model. So um, that's great to know. Thanks for that. We'll be able to give information back to everyone, um, depending on your level of experience the course of, web, of the webinar. Um, now we're going to launch another poll. And this one is regarding um, why you're considering a hybrid cloud. So just to get a sense of what's driving your interest in the webinar today and the hybrid cloud model. So if you could take a moment to answer that question, that'd be great. It looks like the second question got cut off, or answer got cut off. I'm reading it right now, and it looks like um, that answer is supposed to say, already have a private cloud, and you need a public cloud for bursting. So hopefully that clarifies that available answer there. OK, let me take a look at this here. So it looks like most of you are already using a public cloud and need the private cloud for other reasons, for other workloads perhaps. And then some of you have already started with the private cloud. And then the, the two last answers, security and compliance, that's a main driver, of course, for a hybrid cloud model. So we'll be able to address those also for you today in the webinar and, and what um, we're able to offer to help with those challenges. Now the last poll is uh, regarding whether or not you've actually started a hybrid cloud initiative. So if you can take a couple minutes to answer that one, that'd be great, just to get a sense of how far in people are with their hybrid cloud activity or initiative. OK, now it looks like we've got the answers. OK, and the majority of you are just researching, but some have already gone well and started to, to get a hybrid cloud initiative started. OK, good. Well, thanks for sharing that information with us. I think that the content is well suited to the audience today um, based on those responses. We've got a good variety of um, hybrid cloud scenarios that we'll go over and that DataPipe has had extensive experience managing for their customers. So. It will be interesting, I think, for everyone on the line. And now we'll go to the next slide, which is to introduce the panel of speakers today. And we've got on the line Dean Derricks. He's the Director of Strategic Alliances and Channels here at RightScale. And then also Ed Lezinski, who runs um, Cloud Strategy and Architecture for DataPipe. He's the VP over there at the DataPipe group. And then on Q&A, we have an account executive from the RightScale team. His name is Bryce Larson. And the way that we structure our webinars is we always have somebody on the line who can answer your questions as they come up during the course of the webinar. So if you just enter your questions using the GoToWebinar, GoToWebinar excuse me, control panel on the right-hand side of your screen, then Bryce will either answer those questions right away or he'll save them until the end when we do a live Q&A and he'll direct them to either Dean or to Ed, depending on what the question is. And those questions will start during the live Q&A at the end. So just feel free to keep putting your
Well, Lisa, I think, uh, think you got cut off really quickly. Uh, again, thank you so much. This is Dean Derrick, and if you could advance to the next slide, I will take it from here. Great. Thank you. For those new to RightScale, RightScale is a multi-cloud management platform encompassing orchestration, configuration management, and automation, uh, which enables monitoring, alerts, escalation, and automated remedial action. What RightScale has done is combined it with a management layer for better visibility and control over users, groups, accounts, systems, company assets, and costs. We've been at this going on five years now. Uh, we have more than 40,000 users on the platform and have launched over 2.5 million servers. And to bring that into perspective, that, that number, our customers are influencing close to or a little over 2% of all daily internet traffic. RightScale is behind the largest production deployments on the cloud to date. Some of those listed below here. But also, RightScale is now behind the largest hybrid environment in the world, which is uh, a leeway into our, uh, our presentation today. Next slide, please. So what is RightScale? RightScale is, a, as I mentioned before, a multi-cloud management platform that sits in the middle as an abstraction layer above infrastructure and below the application layer. RightScale, as we define it, really brings that level of agnostic system design and management to cloud. And as we talk about cloud more specifically, uh, cloud it could be public or private, or in this case, uh, in, in this presentation today, hybrid. Next cloud, or next cloud, next uh, slide, please. Thank you. So the value that our customers derive through, uh, through RightScale um, really is um, a, what we would consider a services layer which enables DevOps to agnostically uh, build and maintain reusable agnostic systems faster while automating common system-based manual processes uh, in the incident maintenance windows. So the, the value of the platform and what, what partners or customers are receiving is improved agility. And that is agility comes in, in uh, the face of not having to manage uh, at machine, uh, machine images. Um, and as you think about the complexity of now the ecosystem as you look at more than one cloud, you have different APIs, and you have, and you have different uh, proprietary and often static machine images. So RightScale eliminates that and gives you a framework to build these systems and maintain them agnostically. At a, at a higher level, RightScale also gives you the ability to maintain it at a systems level and not just a server level. So from system management or, or configuration management, you can make a, a change in one place and actually have it this, uh, send out to, to multiple, to multiple uh, servers. So you can manage at a much higher level of abstraction. And then we introduce the ability to automate a lot of those manual processes. We also give you the, uh, RightScale right gives you the ability to maintain choice. Uh, so again, as we talk about, you know, the uh, multiple clouds here. We give you a cloud agnostic system design, as I mentioned up, up above, but we also have introduced a marketplace where companies, partners, uh, and independent software vendors can actually go and publish, build their, their systems on RightScale and use multiple clouds to distribute those solutions. And at a higher level, we give you control and security. And that is, as I mentioned before, uh, control, security, and visibility over all users' assets uh, within and systems within the system or platform. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to introduce you to DataPipe. Today, DataPipe will introduce you to a set of unique offerings that they have developed to address 
a rapidly growing need in the cloud. So it is my pleasure to introduce you to DataPipe's VP of Cloud, Ed Lazinski. Ed, take it away. Thank you, Dean. Thanks, Elise. And thank you uh, for everyone for taking the time to uh, join the webinar today. Um, I'd like to first introduce DataPipe uh, to everyone, uh, if you don't know about us already. Um, DataPipe offers a single provider solution for managing and securing mission cr critical IT services. So we do everything from cloud computing to co-location, managed hosting, um, really wrapped around uh, delivering our customers a single vendor, a single SLA, uh, and uh, a high degree of governance and control over their IT infrastructure. Next slide, please. One of, one of the things that's very unique about DataPipe, we see as one of our big differentiators, is our global reach. Um, we have well over 1,000 customers. Uh, most of these are Global 2000 or Fortune 500 companies. Um, and what's really interesting is that many of them use at least two different types of solutions from DataPipe. So they may use um, a, a dedicated solution, or an enterprise cloud, or they, they may use it in multiple locations as well. So we really try to provide as, as much breadth of offering uh, as well as a deep offering in terms of the services we provide. One of the things that we're really proud of is our customer service track record. We really pride ourselves on understanding our customers' requirements and delivering them solutions that serve critical IT needs. Um, you know, as Dean mentioned, you know, Rayscale takes a very system uh, approach, systematic approach to, to customers and to customers' applications, and we do the same thing. And we really look at our, our customers' infra infrastructure in the context of solutions. And we seek to deliver a very high level of SLA and availability delivered by a team of experts around the world. One thing we're also really proud of is our uh, naming uh, last year in the latest Gartner Magic Quadrant for cloud infrastructure. So, you know, we were placed along other industry leaders, uh, which really speaks to our depth, quality of service, and how we're innovating in cloud today. So, today we're talking about hybrid cloud computing, and I think it's useful to sort of frame the conversation in the, in the context of why is this important right now. And uh, we think hybrid cloud computing uh, is important because it solves a variety of problems, and it does it for a variety of uh, use cases and, and customer types. So today we're going to talk about three specific use cases. We're going to talk about hybrid storage, hybrid databases, and hybrid, hybrid private cloud. And uh, what's really interesting about this is that it really cuts across the uh, industry verticals that we serve. So we have customers in gaming, in healthcare, systems, systems integrators, entertainment, uh, digital agencies that all use one or, or many of these use cases to solve their IT problems today. To put a finer point on it, I want to kind of demonstrate where we see uh, some specific challenges that can be solved using uh, hybrid uh, cloud computing solutions. So. Um, a couple of these uh, on the board here I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Um, one thing that we've seen demand for recently is around cloud provider diversity. So, you know, the ability to have um, more than one uh, uh, cloud that you can leverage uh, to ensure either uptime, compliance, um, availability, et cetera. We also see a lot of demand around high I.O. and high performance. And, uh, you know, as, as, as public clouds mature, and uh, their offerings become more and more robust, uh, we see you know, these barriers go away, but there's still going to be uh, workloads that are going to be uh, very uh, reliant on high performance, high I.O. computing that is tough to deliver in public cloud today with a reasonable ROI. So we'll talk about that as well today. So we deploy hybrid solutions. Um, and we don't look at it through the lens of, uh, of you know, this is the box that you get and, you know, uh, that's, that's, that is what it is. We, we try to bring best of breed vendors and technology together to deliver uh, solutions for our customers. So whether that's uh, private cloud, 
for uh, virtualization-based uh, uh, solutions, uh, dedicated managed infrastructure, uh, public cloud via our uh, relationship with Amazon Web Services. Um, we think we've brought in the best of breed from the industry along with RightScale on the management and uh, to deliver a very robust uh, set of solutions for our customers. So the first use case I'd like to talk about is hybrid storage. And actually, I want to ask Dean, um, you know, many people, when they think about hybrid cloud computing, they, they just think about the computing side, CPUs, servers, that sort of thing. And we're seeing a lot of uh, folks asking us about storage as well. Are you seeing the same sort of thing at right scale in terms of hybrid storage requests? No, that, that, that's a great question, Ed. And actually, we are. And it, it really ranges, right? I mean, it ranges from uh, the enterprises that uh, are looking at where, where cloud fit to even our Web 2.0 type of customers. It is, uh, it's becoming a, a larger request, especially as you begin looking at some of the volatility that we've recently seen uh, in, uh, in some of these public, uh, some of these public uh, infrastructure services uh, clouds yeah. out there. So yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, I think this scenario, I think, kind of illustrates something where you have a customer that's in a social gaming space. They had pretty much their entire web operation running on public cloud. And we see that a lot. And uh, it worked well for them. Um, however, they, there was a critical failure. And they were unable to access some very important customer data during uh, a, a, an outage event. And while they were able to reposition resources uh, in public cloud to respond to uh, and deliver transactions to their customers, they were not able to access this data because it was in an area that was, at that time, inaccessible. And uh, what we designed for them was a solution that maintained copies of their data in a geographically diverse and provider diverse environment while giving them 100% availability and a durability SLA around that data. So we'll talk about that in a little more detail. Um, this customer uh, was on Amazon Web Services Public Cloud. They connected the data pipe. Uh, we, we worked with um, their architects and their developers on uh, connecting from Amazon into data pipe. Um, we positioned a highly available backup endpoint, uh, which is basically um, two uh, dedicated uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux um, servers uh, in one of our data centers that was connected back to our tier two storage. And the customer managed that backup through a product called Amanda, which I believe is available in open source and commercial versions. We also offer uh, a variety of backup agents and backup software as well, depending on the customer's platform and need. So this solved their problem. They were able to always have uh, their critical data available to them, no matter what was going on in, 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 in a public cloud uh, uh, event. Um, they're pushing about terabyte of data per day. And they're getting about 32 megabytes of throughput or more, depending on uh, the backup client used and if they're doing SSH tunneling. And there's you know a lot of... Um, uh, variables that can impact throughput, but it was acceptable to them and they were able to deliver uh, uh, back to their executives a lot of assurance around data availability. The next use case that we want to explore is database management services. So, as I mentioned before, um, we see many customers with existing high I.O. Uh, enterprise class database platforms. So specifically, I'm talking about shops with Oracle Rack, SQL Server Enterprise clusters, and things of that nature. So here we had a customer in the entertainment space. They wanted to burst the public cloud for specific workloads. Um, they're actually processing uh, nightly billing on a uh, social media application that they had. Um, they needed to maintain a high ROI and, uh, and high performance at the same time. So they wanted the best of both worlds, really. They want to lower the cost of these billing workloads, but they didn't want to affect their mainline application. So in this case, we provide the customer with a big iron database and a data pipe managed solution. We connected that to our managed cloud and uh, delivered it through the RightScale platform. So I'll go into that in a little detail. Ed, and I think, I think this is a, a pretty interesting use case here, right? I mean, as, as you begin looking, as you, you mentioned, at these, uh, as, at these public clouds today, 
there is limitations, uh, especially as you begin kind of diving deeper into some of these, uh, you know, requirements, especially around like Oracle Rack and and um, in, in Microsoft and, and others, right? Because companies out there that we're talking to are are talking a lot about you know, Windows back office and, and legacy type of systems come into play and, and as you begin looking at, at this, this is really kind of the first introduction into these type of workloads moving to moving to a type of cloud environment. So excited to hear more about about this, what you guys are doing. Yeah, exactly. I think I think we're seeing customers with, you know, entrenched investment in applications that are built to take advantage of you know, big iron databases, and also have the skill set there, and they have, they trust them sort of the reliability and the performance of the platform. So, you know, while you know, again, while public cloud uh, innovation will sort of drive um, customer adoption of perhaps some new technologies, there, there's there's still big benefit. And if you talk to you know the DBAs in your in your shop or you know in your company, and, and you ask them, you know, if they wanted to deliver. So high, high IO, high reliable, highly, highly reliable solutions. I think that they're going to be still looking to deliver that on, on uh, equipment uh, like we can, we can provide. But we still want to provide that um, connectivity to public cloud uh, where appropriate. So in this case, the, the customer's transaction heavy applications were running on SQL Server Enterprise. Uh, it was connected to a high performance tier one uh, SAN. And what we did for the, their billing workloads is we connected that to Data Plate Managed Cloud for Amazon Web Services, which is basically our, um, our public cloud partner in Amazon. We deliver uh, our customers' uh, workloads uh, through Amazon. We manage that for them uh, from a SLA billing and support perspective, and we deliver that to them uh, from a dashboard perspective via right scale. So uh, our team uh, worked with uh, the customer to deliver their security groups, their instances, their applications, uh, you know, via the right scale dashboard um, on AWS for, the, for those workloads that were appropriate for cloud. Um, it wound up being large Windows and Windows SQL instances, uh, SQL standard. Um, and those are connected back to the dedicated solution for uh, transaction uh, uh, connectivity. And their end users were able to hit either system without any interruption of service or knowledge about service origination. So they didn't; their customer did not know that part of the solution was in um, a managed public cloud and part of it was in a dedicated high-performance database. It's a, to, the, to the end user, it was a seamless experience. And again, talk to you know our approach to this is we think it's important to uh, have one SLA around solutions like this because. Part of your, your, if your public cloud, the piece of the public cloud has an issue or a failure or a problem, or part of the, the private side or the dedicated side has a problem, and you have multiple uh, uh, vendors that you need to go after to kind of figure out what's going on. We we found customers come to us and say, you know, we want we want one one uh, one SLA, one vendor to take care of that. It makes it a lot easier. Makes a lot of sense. So the, the next um, scenario is sort of, you know, the one that's really hot right now. It's on a private cloud and and, uh, and and delivering hybrid private public clouds. And uh, you know, I just want to ask Dean. I think you know, we talked about hybrid cloud in the context of connecting public cloud to specific hosted services. What do you think is driving the demand for for private cloud in your customer base in terms of being able to deploy sort of API-driven or elastic workloads, but within, you know, a private uh, context. You know, I, th I think it, it it ranges, right? I, I think you have, uh, as, as you look at the our customer base, it, there is a, a handful of, of drivers drivers there. You know, compliance uh, is one of them. Security, um, performance. You know, I, I think price is is definitely uh, out there. You'd mentioned. Um, you mentioned in your slide, a couple slides uh, above here, uh, around high availability, uh, especially as you look at the volatil volatility of, of cloud today, or, or any any you know data center today. As as you, as you look at how do you how do you really guarantee 100 percent or, or five nines? Uh, you know, I I also see, and, and this is a case with um, 
customers uh, that are moving in and looking at, at these business drivers where, where RightScale you know, enables and, and DataPipe can enable them to, to do more, and that is more around operationalize uh, or optimize their, their, uh, their systems, right, so internally, so that where they, where they do have, they do uh, have the need uh, for one of these, one of these things that I've just mentioned, but they, they're looking at how do we, how do we make ourselves more efficient? How do we do more with less? So, those are those are a lot of the things that we hear specifically around uh, around this. Yeah, great. I think we're seeing similar things just around compliance and security. So, actually, it's appropriate Absolutely. here. This use case that we'll talk about is where you know, a customer wanted a single deployment model on diverse providers. So, in other words, they wanted you know a single way to sort of develop software, and they had um, needs to deploy that on public and private cloud providers. So RightScale fits really well in terms of a delivery model there. And uh, we supplied, um, you know, in addition to some dedicated uh, 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 service for them, uh, a private cloud and uh, our managed cloud uh, in public AWS. So we'll go into detail on that. Um, this customer had mission critical data. Uh, in a PCA compliant dedicated solution. So, you know, DataPipe has a turnkey PCI compliant uh, offering and for things like um, sensitive user data, whether it has um, credit card data or not in it, uh, the PCI security control provide a very robust um, framework for protecting it. So in this case, they had um, their global user data on a dedicated solution um, and actually two data centers, but they were uh, looking to deliver a web CRM application in public cloud, and there was a variety of reasons for that. Uh, one of them was, was that they were going to use public cloud anyway for CDN, and they also were delivering um, uh, a lot of object and user, uh, user submitted or, or customer submitted content, so they're leveraging things like Amazon S3. Um, but because of the business that they're in, and which is, you know, in satellite, satellite tech, there's a lot of sensitive data. It falls under some security regimes that are, are very uh, sensitive, and um, public cloud was not appropriate for even their dev test environment because of the nature of their business. We positioned a uh, private cloud and a data pipe data center on behalf of the customer, so we delivered it up to the infrastructure as a service level. Uh, everything from the, the network to the compute to the storage, and then uh, they manage that via Rayscale across these clouds, which is really you know, allows them to really innovate, allows them to have their developers train on a single platform without worrying about lock-in, and allows us to deliver a very high level of service to them as well in terms of managing their SLA and providing the support when they need it. Again, the single vendor model is appropriate here you know, one, one bill, one SLA from one provider managing a diverse set of IT infrastructure. So, so and real quick question here, as, as you look at, uh, as, as you look at these, uh, these types of workloads that are hybrid and enabled, you know, one of the, one of the questions that, that we hear a lot is, especially as customers as customers are, are using Amazon and looking at these hybrid environments, how do you, do you do you have to build separate workloads for you know for private and then a separate workload for uh, for say public? And and if you could kind of explain how you guys are doing that, I think that would be helpful for everyone to understand. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know if when, when customers come to us with those sort of requirements, that RightScale is a really good fit there because of multi-cloud image support template support. So we can help our customers develop a single framework that will be supported on multiple clouds. So a, we seek to deliver our private cloud in an environment that's compatible to that and um, allows our customers to really focus on you know, what they're good at, which is might be software development or delivering a good end user experience or providing their SaaS application or whatever it is they're doing and less worried about, you know, how they're going to position resources. So 
we think that you know that, that's where RightScale provides a lot of value to us and makes our job a lot easier to deliver these solutions to our customers. Well, I think what's what's interesting in what DataPipe has also done is DataPipe uh, has has built a set of these workloads or, or pre-configured systems for for very specific vertical markets. Um, right. Yeah. Right. Can you explain a little bit more about? I know you touched on that um, a yeah, little yeah. bit with the interactive agencies, but if you could go in a little yeah. bit more detail, I think that would be helpful. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, you know, on interactive agencies, we do, we do a lot of business in, in that market, and we find a common workloads, you know, around WordPress deployments, Drupal deployments, um, uh, uh, web lead tracking, CRM tracking, et cetera. So as we've kind of built support for those, we've 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 done it in a way that we can very quickly deliver those sort of applications to that to that market, and we're and so. In the case of WordPress, in the case of uh, Drupal, for example, we very rapidly provide a high level of availability in either public or private cloud around those solutions, and pretty much um, really uh, shorten the cycle from when a customer, when 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 their customer wants uh, a solution delivered to when their developers can get their hands on it and start innovating on it. So um, we, we that's what's nice about RightScale that you can sort of build these libraries. Of workloads that you can repeat, and uh, you're not locked in. So uh, we like that a lot. I, I, you you mentioned you mentioned uh, one of the use cases was very specific around uh, gaming uh, gaming workloads, or or I know you guys specialize in in mobile, do a lot of uh, mobile builds, and in and as you mentioned, this this whole social media craze that even you know as you look at at, at you know Web 2.0 based type of company is you're seeing a lot more of that moving into the mainline enterprises where enterprises are wanting to take advantage of these new uh, mediums of Facebook or, or, or these other uh, the, these other venues, right? So it's interesting to see that catalog and excited to see that catalog continue to grow as you guys build that out. Yeah, absolutely. We're definitely seeing, you know, the enterprise, what, what is enterprise is changing because as the sort of the Web 2.0 community, the gaming community, the social media community, the, they're pushing those sort of workloads into the enterprise because ultimately it, that's how the enterprises deliver their marketing, their media message, their communication message, and, and we're finding that we're able to use a lot of that library. For example, we built a, uh, uh, a web acceleration um, template that allows us to quickly do uh, uh, push content to the edge even if, you're, even if your existing web app is sort of not cache friendly and uh, uh, uses an open source technology called Varnish. Um, and uh, you know we saw it you know really be useful in, in gaming and mobile spaces, but we're also seeing enterprises pick that up as well, as they have, you know perhaps they have an older content management system that um, they instead of making the investment to upgrade the entire content management system, they'll leverage um, public cloud and web acceleration to uh, push it to their customers and get more life out of it. So. We're, we're that's, that's, that. a, that's a pretty cool one. That's a cool, you guys actually uh, that that template uh, that uh, template that you guys built actually won the uh, award for for best uh, uh, best in a, uh, template at at our last uh, user conference in San Jose, I believe, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. We're 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 happy to be best in show. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Thank you. So. So, you know, in conclusion, um, as far as the presentation, thank you so much, everyone, for taking the time to, to listen to what Dean and I had to say today about hybrid cloud. We, we, we want to make the point that hybrid clouds are available today. They're reliable. They're supported. Uh, whether it's from data pipe and right scale or other vendors, it's a, they're, they're real um, uh, solutions available today. We, we believe we deliver uh, a solution that's, again, very highly available, highly reliable, and, uh, and, and well supported. So. Um, We'd love to talk to you about uh, what your needs are and and, uh, and see where uh, we can take hybrid cloud computing with you. Great. Well, Ed, thank you. Thank you so much. I know we are in a question and answer uh, stage right now. And, uh, and and very, very quickly, thank you for, for the presentation. This, this was excellent. Um, with respect to uh, one of the questions uh, that, that came in, um, early on, I guess I'll I'll uh, I'll take the first question and then uh, pa pass it on to you if that sounds uh, all right. Great, yeah. So.
So the, the first question that I, that I just received here is, is how, uh, how does RightScale accomplish its multi-cloud configuration management? And what RightScale has done is developed a design methodology enabling us to, uh, to build what we call templates, RightScale templates. And the definition of a template uh, is a description of how a new instance will be configured when it is provisioned by the, the cloud provider. And so the template includes, if you will, the base operating system at its lowest level. Um, and and what, we, what we have done above that is we have abstracted all the things that often, uh, that often need, uh, need the most attention, such as the environmental inputs and the behavior. How is, how is these uh, systems going to, to behave? Uh, we have uh, the scripts uh, operational, uh, you know, um, boot operational and decommission scripts. Uh, and then we also have the cloud credentials of the, uh, of the cloud provider. And so it enables, it enables uh, partners and customers such as Datapipe and, and, and their, their customers to rapidly uh, change, uh, you know, change and, and be agnostic to the environments that they actually run on. So the value is, uh, is that it's faster, easier, and agnostic. They're not having to build separate uh, machine images and manage in a machine level, uh, or image machine level uh, at, uh, at each cloud or in each cloud, which as you know, just from an Amazon standpoint, I think today they have five, right? So, so that is, uh, that uh, hopefully will answer your question. How about if I pass it on to, to you, Ed, to uh, take the next one? Sure. Um, I have a question here about um, Joomla uh, CMS support, and uh, and you know I, I think the question would be, you know, do you support Joomla, and and do you have templates for Joomla, and can you quickly, you know, you know, help a, a company deploy Joomla in a highly available public or private cloud environment? The answer would be yes. Um, we've seen a lot of Joomla, and uh, happy to support that, um, along with other. Um, commercial package or open source based CMS systems. Um, do you want me to take another one, Dean, and then maybe I'll, I'll pass it back to you? Sure. Sounds great. Um, another question we had is about um, mainland China. Can you deploy private cloud or hybrid solutions in mainland China? And uh, I've actually seen a lot of this come in recently, um, a lot of demand. Um, obviously, the economy is growing, but it's also U.S.-based companies um, that are familiar with data pipes delivery model that want to uh, position resources in that region. So, yes, um, we, we can do that. And uh, we have, uh, you know, it's, it's a interesting place to do business in the sense that you have um, uh, a very um, specific way to deliver Internet connectivity in terms of licensing and uh, legal requirements. So. It is not as um, on-demand friendly as maybe some other regions, but it's certainly a, a great place to do business, and we have uh, support for cloud in China today. Great. A uh, question that I have is, uh, is doesn't RightScale do managed services? Well, actually, RightScale doesn't do managed services, and that is one of the reasons why we have uh, our partner ecosystem in, in Datapipe actually talking today. RightScale provides, again, that platform that uh, managed services companies or, or uh, companies in general can leverage to, uh, to, to manage these, uh, these types of deployments and, and, uh, and their needs uh, specifically around cloud. But no, uh, RightScale doesn't do managed services. So how about if, uh, let's take a peek. Uh, I think there's a couple others that look like they're coming in. Uh, looks like there's one for you, Ed, yeah. here that, go ahead. Uh, yeah, the one, I have one here about what, what, op, what operating system and stacks are being used in private cloud. So, two, so it's kind of a two-level question. Um, in terms of like delivering the underlying infrastructure, uh, those are typically delivered via Linux-based um, hosts. But the operating systems on top are being delivered in a variety of platforms. So, you know, 
you're going to see your Windows, you're going to see your Red Hat, Debian, Ubuntu. Um, we're seeing some requests for scientific Linux. And um, we're, we're also seeing some customers with what I call kind of oddball operating systems, with operating systems that aren't typically supported by other clouds. And uh, we're looking at leveraging hypervisors like KVM to deliver those sort of things. So, you know, we're seeing lots of different requirements from customers, but, you know, you, it's your typical, you know, Linux, LAMP, Ruby on Rails, Java Tomcat stuff, and then your Windows.net uh, SQL Server type, type stuff as well. So another question for you here. Um, are the private cloud services shared or dedicated? Ah, that's a good question. So um, certainly customers with specific compliance or security requirements are going to be able to host uh, dedicated private clouds of data pipes. So that, that would be where they have complete sort of ownership and access to the resources um, from from the basically from the switch down to storage. The, the however, there are customers that don't require that level of um, of single tenancy, and in those cases, what we're seeing um, customers that uh, have uh, requirements around let's, let's say dedicated compute or dedicated firewall, uh, but are are able to deploy uh, on shared storage, for example. So. We're trying to be very flexible as these demands come in from customers, and you know, let the let our customers tell us what they need. And uh, we've we've picked sort of a private cloud strategy that is very, again, very complementary to what Amazon provides, because uh, a lot of customers want that flexibility between. And we let we we uh, really are glad to have right scale mediate that, but also um, try to be as flexible as we can. Um, and be more open with our customers about what they can do with Private Cloud to design to their specs. So you know, a lot of what we do is really deliver a custom SLA, a custom solution that's highly available, always available, always supported. So because of that, we have to be very uh, flexible and uh, hope that answers that question. Yeah, makes, makes sense. No, another question here for you. Um, uh, one concern with hybrid storage across cloud is the significant additional cost of data transfer. The question is, can you compress the data here, and uh, how can those costs be limited? That's a great question. So yes, data compression is available. Um, and you know, the first thing, the storage case we talked about before, where they're using Amanda, I believe they they have data compression on to, to minimize uh, transfer costs. You know, we have. We've developed uh, some solutions with our customers where uh, we're, we're doing some very deliberate compression. Um, on the transfer cost side, I mean, we've we've limited costs by um, pursuing peering relationships with with other providers. So we we I think we have a pretty compelling data transfer cost story. Uh, that we'd we'll be happy to talk about um, if there's uh, a specific needs there. So I, I think we can we can definitely make the ROI case for this uh, from a data transfer perspective. I, I've got to I've got to tell you, Ed, it's, the, the the questions keep on rolling. Are you uh, do you have the do you have the energy to keep on answering them? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll take I'll take one. Um, Could you please explain how one would go about transferring architecture from a public to a private cloud? Mm -hmm. I.e., mean, starting off in a public cloud and using data replication to a private cloud. So, it's a great question. So, if we're leveraging the right scale platform, we're going to uh, first look at the compute and ensure that we can deliver uh, multi cloud uh, images for that customer, and, and unless they're, again, on, on, on an oddball operating system, it typically would be a very straightforward operation. Um, and we'd look to match the compute workloads as best we could. So we designed a service offering that maps closely and complementary to their public cloud uh, offering. And we would then um, look at the storage and data side of it. So it's kind of two different phases, and uh, when we look at storage, 
Um, it really depends on how the customer is using public cloud storage. Is, 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 are, are they using S3? Are they using uh, EBS volumes? I mean, there's a lot of detail there, but um, essentially we look to um, transfer that data over um, using a variety of um, techniques, whether it's over uh, internet, over peering connections, uh, load up a hard drive and ship it, that sort of thing. Uh, depending on is this a migration or a continuation or a bursting scenario. Um, but at the end of the day, um, because we're using the RiceCall platform, we can spin up that compute load and uh, uh, do regression testing for the customer and then, uh, and then position that private cloud resource um, pretty quickly. So there's a question here about um, other alternative private cloud providers that you work with, or is it a single vendor lock-in? Well, I'd say that we're, you know, in this case, we're providing the private cloud, and we don't work with other private cloud providers in the sense that we um, we may power other private cloud providers. You know, we, other, you know we, we sell to into a channel, and we have companies that sort of use DataPipe to deliver private cloud under their own brand, so you may be on DataPipe and not know it, um, but the other... I think the point is, are you locked into data pipe with this? And I think the really important thing is we're not about lock-in. We've always been a very open company and allowing our customers to, you know, you know, have a, we want a long-term relationship, but we're, we're not, uh, we're not really into locking anyone in. Because we're using right scale, you know you're not locked in. And I think that's really, really important. Um, you know, there's many um, cloud uh, uh, solutions available today, called public, called private, called hybrid. Many of them, or most of them, are, uh, are, are, are lock-in focused because they do not leverage the right scale platform. And I think that that is a really important point. Um, there's a, oh, no, I guess a follow-up question about do you work with OpenStack, Open Nebula, et cetera? Um, we don't right now, uh, maybe on our roadmap in the future. But again, we're, you know, because we're delivering a managed service at a high SLA and we're kind of taking care of everything up to the application, we we don't see a lot of demand for that right now, but if we do, or as those technologies mature, we're not sure how mature they are right now. As they mature, we certainly uh, look to uh, include them in our roadmap. There's no philosophical philosophical opposition to any of that. You know, in in the, in the process of of looking at that you know, that cloud abstraction layer for your private for your private clouds, I know that you guys did. Uh, a lot of due diligence on all of those different uh, solutions out there, you know, and um, again, at OpenStack, Nebula, Cloud.com, Eucalyptus, and, and, and others that that, uh, that are making their way onto the scene. So I know we uh, we were uh, we were happy to see that uh, due diligence was definitely made as you guys as you guys built out this the solution. So. Yeah, there's, absolutely. There's a there's a question for RightScale. Conceptually, any thoughts on the relationship between open path solutions and the enabling of hybrid clouds? And um, I think they're speaking more specifically to you know as you look at open path um, um, with uh, with some of the the, the solutions that uh, have been recently announced. One of the things that uh, that we did is um, right scale. Uh, I believe it was uh, I'm trying to think. Was it Cloud Foundry? Uh, that uh, that if, if it is built within Cloud Foundry, uh, that it can actually uh, run on any uh, any supported uh, cloud that right scale has. So we we do see we do see this as as a trend. Um, but again, what we're, what we're really sensitive to is is those open path solutions that, that truly are open in, in that uh, in that sense. So, um, but yes, one thing that that RightScale has has done all along, if uh, any uh, are interested, is go and look at RightScale's uh, uh, multi-cloud marketplace. Right, that is in, in a sense an open path that enables anyone to go and build systems agnostically and go and Run those systems in your private cloud and your uh, in uh, in public clouds out there that are supported by the platform today. So some of those are in Amazon, you know, would be Amazon, 
uh, again, uh, data pipe and uh, rack space. And I think uh, the announcement uh, that we had here a year ago with uh, Amazon Azure, um, and that was our infrastructure as a service uh, offering that will hopefully be coming out shortly. And companies such as Tata and, and others that, uh, that that we're working with. So as you look at this conceptually, yes, uh, almost look at RightScale as that open open path for uh, for managing uh, managing and hosting uh, those uh, those solutions across clouds. So build it once and host it wherever you want. You want to take another question there, Ed? Yeah. Um, I have one here. Um, do you host sensitive and secure data in the cloud? What are the challenges there around encryption and key management? So it's a great question. Um, when we look at um, security, you know, and storing secure data and sensitivity uh, and the sensitivity of that data, we try to quickly qualify whether or not a customer's need requires, you know, PCI to uh, security controls. So when they do, today, we deliver that portion through um, a secure cloud environment, a data type that's really the only other tenants are those who have those same PCI requirements or through a, our turnkey dedicated PCI solutions. However, we believe that there will be opportunities to deliver that sort of um, data on public cloud uh, in the future. Um, that, that said, it doesn't mean that we don't have customers storing sensitive and secure data in the cloud. So in those cases, we do um, help our customers architect and give them guidance around uh, encryption of data at rest. Um, around, you know, we manage, for example, security group configuration. Um, we manage uh, aspects of how they deliver um, host-based firewalls if necessary, depending on the, the data that they're storing. So, you know, and, and also leveraging tools like VPC from Amazon as well in a public cloud context. So, again, it really depends on the mix, but once it crosses that threshold where it needs to be PCI2 today, we have a different uh, way of delivering that and we don't deliver that on public cloud today, but we may in the future. There's another question here about um, India. Do we have a presence in India? And we don't. Uh, we do service many customers out of our Hong Kong uh, location there, but we do not have an India location today. Um, and, and that same question was about healthcare customers. Um, we do have many customers in healthcare, many major customers in healthcare. And uh, we have some very, very specific offerings around helping them meet their compliance or regulatory needs. So, again, it's once you get into security, regulatory, um, uh, compliance, et cetera, it's, there's no simple answer. But to say that you know we're we're prepared and delivering those kind of solutions to customers today. Fantastic. Dean, sorry, any other ones, Dean? You wanna? Cover here. No, what what I think I know there's there's a there's a handful of others, but what I would what I would suggest let's uh, let's conclude this webinar. Thank uh, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, we we would uh, encourage more questions and uh, dialogue uh, regarding any of the topics that were discussed here uh, within this this webinar. What I would suggest is that uh, you reach out directly to DataPipe. Uh, the contact information uh, is on this slide. Uh, Ed Lazinski, Bill Dolan, who is their, uh, who is, runs their sales uh, for cloud, is their uh, VP of sales for cloud, uh, would be happy to uh, get back to you and, and share with you more around what DataPipe uh, is, is doing in the hybrid space. So with that, thank you very much, Ed. Appreciate your time and uh, looking forward to, to many more of these. Yes, thank you, Dean. Thanks, everyone, for joining today. Appreciate it.